Wow, big crowd. How are we doing tonight, today? Uh, I just thought I'd give you a little history first on me a little bit. Uh, it's going to go to the now. First of all, uh, I've been fishing Winnebago since I was probably seven or eight years old. And I actually got into it because my uncle used to take me out there and we had this old 12 or 14 foot boat with like a 10 horse or 12 horse or something. And when I was 16 years old, I went and I bought my first boat and mom used to tell us, We'd put in at Jefferson Park, and Mom would say, I don't want you to go any further than Nina. Well, we ended up down by Oshkosh and Fond du Lac and everywhere else throughout the system. And Well, we got, we used to have wooden spoons back then, my mom did. And, you know, she never complained on Fridays and Saturdays though, when she was eating fish. So, um, for those of you that don't know me, I run a website called WinnebagoFishing.com. Um, I thank everybody that has come to that website. Um, it's currently... I always say number one in the state for uh, walleye information. It's number 17 in the nation right now. Uh, my radio show is on every Saturday at 12.30 in the afternoon. Uh, 12.30 to 1 o'clock on 13.30 a.m. WHBL. And uh, we just got our ratings back from that. We're number two in the state, uh, only behind WTMJ for our time slot. So we must be doing something right. Um, here you go, a little bit of a bio. Uh, I have a daughter who's 17 years old. She used to fish with me, but then she turned 13 or 14 and discovered boys, and now dad's not cool anymore, so she doesn't hang out with me too much. Um, I love fishing walleyes. I do a lot of tournament fishing. In 2005, I, was a, I got my United States Coast Guard captain's license. Uh, I've been published in several magazines around the state and around the country. Uh, as you know, I do my radio show, and I did a TV segment on Channel 5 called Axel's Rod and Really Port, and that was on for... I think 27 or 28 weeks, and then Channel 5, every year they do a different uh, different kind of segment. This year I think they had Bob Burns Gulf on or something like that, and next year they might come back to doing fishing again. And like I said, I founded WinnebagoFishing.com, and you know we continue to grow, and I appreciate that. That's because of all of you guys visited my website. And I do this kind of thing in the off-season. You know, I do several seminars. Uh, today I'm here, and in a, I think a week and a half or so I'll be at the Sheboygan Walleye Club on March 17th or 18th. March 18th at 7 o'clock, so if you want to come hear this again, that's, this is what we'll be talking about there as well. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, I'm going to go through some things that I do on a general basis every day when I'm with my clients. Uh, we're going to talk about how I go about finding a reef, marking a reef, how to use wind direction, how I anchor, boat placement, line, jigs, baits, and what I think about using bobbers. So, a lot of people have different definitions of what a reef is, and I, I want to say that to me, a reef or fish in the rocks is anywhere where there's any kind of structure. I don't care if there's a two-foot hump. If I'm in 16 feet of water and I find a two-foot hump and it might only be 30 or 40 feet long, I mark that on my graph. I have so many icons and so many different things marked on my, on my graph and my boat, and every day I find new stuff. And if I see a guy fishing in a spot, I'll try to get close to him, not so I'm hoarding in on him so much, but just so I can see where he is and line up the background and everything else, and I'll mark that location, and after he leaves, I go in and I try to find out why he was fishing there. A reef is anywhere where I consider that there's structure, anywhere on the system. Some of them are pretty obvious. You know, you have like Stevens Reef, and you have uh, Long Point, uh, Gerke's Reef. Those are all obvious reefs, but I like to fish the ones that nobody else fishes. What I do is, when I do find a, a reef, I do exactly what, it, what this says here. Um, I, I go over and over and over the reef until I find the very top of it. If I'm finding 7.2 feet of water, I throw a buoy marker out, and if I ride over it again and I find 6.8, I throw another buoy marker out, I pick up the first one, and I'll continue to go over these reefs until I find the very top of the reef. I always mark it with a buoy. I enter it in my GPS after I found the very top of it. I don't enter it when I first mark it, I enter it after I'm leaving, okay? Because you never know if you might find something else that's a little higher in the water column. Um, when I return to the reef, I always watch my graph to make sure that I have the top of the reef. Again, even though I might have been fishing this spot for years and years and years, I might not have the exact top marked. So I always, I always go and I always make sure that I have the top of the reef marked all the time, no matter what it is. And one thing that's really important that a lot of people don't do and this is like a little tip here, so you might want to write this down if you're writing this one down. Is <laughs> always remember to mark, to rename your spot. I don't know how many waypoints you guys have in your graph, but I see a lot of these guys that have waypoint one, two, three, all the way up to 234. 
and they don't name the spots that they're fishing. And we have every single place we try to name it because I can't remember what waypoint 73 is on my graph, but I can remember airplane reef. And the reason I say that is because maybe an airplane flew over when we were fishing that particular reef. So I always make sure to mark, I always make sure to name my reefs. Anything you can think of, if it's your buddy in your boat, if something funny happens there, if you're eating a sandwich, whatever it is, think of a name for it because then you'll remember it. And that way if you do fish with a group of guys, you can say, hey, we were fishing on airplane reef, we were fishing on you know, whatever you want to call it. And that way they all have the same thing instead of saying, oh, we are on waypoint 73. Well, that doesn't mean anything to anybody else except for you. And that's only if you can remember waypoint 73. Wind direction. A lot of people on Winnebago hate the wind, and I am probably one of them. But uh, the wind is your best friend out there. Wherever the wind is going, that is where your fish are going to be. Uh, wind, when there's wind and you're on the reef, you're going to catch fish. When it's dead calm, you're not going to catch fish on the reef. You, I shouldn't say all the time there are exceptions to the rule, but in general, you always want to use the wind to your advantage. So that's a huge thing. When there's two or three foot waves on the lake and it's on the east shore, I'm fishing the east shore because that's where the waves are crashing into that side. That's where the bait fish are going to be and that's where I'm fishing. What I use to anchor on the reefs is uh, I use two anchors, 25 pounds or more. I use Richter anchors right there. I usually have 100 feet of line, 5 inch uh, rope, and I don't use nylon because that stuff just burns your hands up as we all know when you're pulling it in or letting it out. I use three to four feet of chain on my anchors, and uh, I do that just to let it bury in real good. Everybody knows the zebra mussels are out there, and if you're using light anchors, a lot of times those anchors are just going to skip across the top of the zebra mussels, and they don't dig in real good, and that's a real hassle. Uh, one thing I am going to do this year is I'm actually going to go be getting some of those drop-in stays, because when there's two to three feet waves out there, I want to see if those things are really going to work. So uh, I'm really excited about going down there and visiting Rich and you know, get some of those drop-in stays. Cause how many times has it happened to you guys where you're set up on a reef and all of a sudden your anchors start to let go because there's two to three foot waves out there? Well, Rich has a product that he developed and that's all about, you know, preventing that problem. Boat placement is probably the biggest thing. I'm probably one of the pickiest guys in the world about how I position my boat on the reef and this is exactly what I do. Whenever I fish the, the reef, I'm always 90 degrees to the wind. If the wind is coming out of the north, my boat is going to be exactly east and west. Okay, you know what I mean? I'm perp perpendicular to that. I always cast the wind to my back. And uh, what I do is I get up to the reef. I mark the top of it, like I said earlier. I back away. We'll say the wind again is coming out of the north. I will fish the north side of that reef. And I back away about 75 to 90 feet from it. If my buoy marker is not directly in the middle of my boat, directly when I'm casting out, towards that reef, that buoy marker is not in the middle of my boat, I'm not happy with it. I have a buddy of mine that I fish with. He's not here so we can <laughs> talk about him. And he doesn't, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, he'll be 30, 40, 50 feet off of that buoy marker and he can't understand why he's not catching fish. So I always make sure that I am centered 100% so that the buoy marker is halfway in the middle of the boat, 75 to 90 feet away. Now the way to do that is on the, some of the newer graphs, if you have a Lorance.